Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Pro Trader webinar series. Uh, all week long, we have um, uh, some uh, professional traders. Uh, just go through the list uh, very quickly here. Uh, today, we have Brent Kachuba, uh, Stocks and Futures and its Options. Uh, he um, is a professional uh, options trader with institutional background. Uh, uh, Tuesday, uh, these are all at 10 a.m. except for JTrader on Wednesday at 9 a.m. So Tuesday, we have uh, uh, Fausto Pugliese, a stock trader. Uh, Wednesday, JTrader, 9 a.m., stocks trader. He will be trading live. This is uh, uh, the same uh, webinar that we have with our Global Plus subscribers. Okay, so uh, it's free and open to all here. Uh, you guys will get insight to um, how he uh, trades live market, what he looks at in this, his large cap and small cap setups. Uh, same for Scott Pulsini on Thursday. It's a regular webinar for us at Bookmap and Global Plus subscribers. Uh, he's a futures trader, but uh, you guys will get insight to what he looks at and how he trades order flow uh, and Bookmap for futures. Uh, he will be taking live positions. Uh, and then uh, on Friday, we have uh, David Blake. He's a Bookmap user. Uh, he is uh, um, a professional trader or you know, trades for a living. Uh, he is not an, an educator. Uh, so he is a Bookmap user. This is, gonna, this is the first time we're kind of opening up to uh, other Bookmap uh, users out there uh, and uh, get some insight from uh, uh, how they're using Bookmap. Uh, David is a futures trader, excellent futures trader. Uh, he also trades some stocks, I think, recently as well. Uh, good morning, Tom, Alan, and Doug. Uh, and, uh, and we'll have other guys uh, come in here soon as well. Okay, So uh, looking forward to that. We'll be opening this up uh, today, Brent Kachuba. Uh, and uh, his uh, bio here, uh, he's been trading equities and derivatives for almost 20 years. Um, worked for Bank of America, Credit, Credit Suisse, uh, both as an equities broker and in algorithmic sales and trading. Uh, following that, he's institutional sales uh, for Wolverine, representing their electronic derivatives trading platform. And currently, Brent trades some proprietary strategies and runs spotgamma.com which publishes various metrics on options data. Various metrics is probably an understatement. There's a lot of, <laughs> uh, of metrics uh, to check, take, take out, take, take away from. Um, I have all of Brent's uh, uh, contact information. I'll be posting this uh, directly in the chat. If you guys wanna reach out to uh, Brent and Spot Gamma, you have the website, you have a subscription link. I'll, sh I'll show you this uh, if you're interested in it on the, um, or maybe Brent can show it later on the uh, Bookmap Marketplace. Uh, and then uh, you've got his email, you've got his Twitter, and then special offers uh, for uh, from Brent as an affiliate, okay, with Bookmap. So without further ado, let's now turn it right over to Brent and let him get into it. All right, thanks, Bruce. Make sure I show the right screen here. I'm not sure if I just did that. Uh, I see a Windows icon and it's a vertical it's screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, did to, I don't know if you have to make me presenter again. I just oh. think it's presentations. Okay, let me just try it again. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I got to drag it on this screen. That's why. Sorry, everybody. One day, one day Brent will get this right. All right. How's that? Windows uh, icon looks great again. <laughs> Just it's beaming through. Um, All right, there we go. Now we see, now we see Bookmap. Yeah. All right, there we go. Every one of these things is different. I feel I, I show my age when I don't know how to work these things. It's like a real boomer here. <laughs> All right. Thank you everybody for uh, for joining us here. It is uh, shortly after the open. I know and it's on a Monday, so everyone's probably trying to get um, trading. And so I want to start just real quick uh, looking at a live uh, view of the hero indicator along with we have both a stop uh, indicator and iceberg indicator, which you know Bruce could really tell us a little bit about. But we just saw like a really interesting trade before I kind of get really into what the hero indicator is. Um, you can see this white line here is the hero indicator itself. And what it's doing is it's tracking the options market in real time. So for the ES futures, which is what we're looking at here, we're watching the SPY ETF options and the SPX index options. And 
when that flow comes in, when all those trades are happening, we're keeping track of those trades in real time and figuring out whether the market making hedge pressure is bullish or bearish based on those trades. So if the indicator goes up, as you can see here along my cursor, hopefully, um, that's bullish flow. And then when it drops down, that's bearish flow. So um, for example, test on my fancy pen tool here. So this area right here, is a big drop and what that drop is telling us is somebody either came in and bought puts or sold calls those are bearish trades and that the interesting thing here which caught my eye which is why i want to start with this was not only do you have a big drop in the hero indicator you have this iceberg and stop run i can sorry bruce is actually more of a stop run than an indicator and kind of this big volume spike along you know with the 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 dot showing the big volume spike here so this is a big options trade comes in a few seconds later the hedge hits and the market kind of drops down. So that's a really kind of beautiful example of the way that this can help traders out. And so really, you know, just to set up today, we can come back to this, but I just want to give a real on chart example. You can see that the hero indicator has just been bearish low to start the day. It's not overly bearish, but it has a bearish pressure on it. And then, you know, you can see that with that, the market has just kind of been bleeding lower as well um, to, to kind of start things off here. Just to look at a few of these other names while we're on it, just give you another example. Here's AMC. Oops. Here's the AMC chart so far to start the day. And what's interesting about this is we start off with uh, bearish flow again to start the day, as you can see here, and then it bottoms out. So when this indicator bottoms out, it tells you that the options flow is neutral. Uh, meaning options traders are no longer, you know, overly bearish, overly bullish, bullish. This is just flattened out. So nothing's really happening in the options market. Nothing's really happening in the stock. And then as you can see in here, bullish flow comes in and we have the stock kind of lift off. So this is the type of thing we're looking at. And I'm going to give them the presentation really quickly now and we can come back to some of this chart and take some questions as well. Uh, these are standard you know, risk, risk disclosures here. Everything that we say in the presentation, this is all theory and ideas. Please don't trade off of this information. Uh, we are not licensed to give investment advice, et cetera, et cetera. So um, many of you are familiar with Spot Gamma already. As Bruce mentioned, we analyze the options market and we produce trading levels off of that flow. Many of you are familiar likely with these cloud notes that we produce for the ES and NASDAQ. These are options-based trading levels. They're strictly comes from options data. And every day these are updated and they provide significant support and resistance levels in the market. We have tons of videos on YouTube which talk about these levels, the idea of gamma flips, et cetera. Uh, but that's sort of the bread and butter uh, business that we, that we offer. So let's talk quickly about hedging flow. And this is going to build into the hero indicator. We believe that options hedging flow is a major driver of markets. And this is particularly true of the ES, uh, the S&P 500 complex, and then any name where you see large options volume. This past couple of weeks, AMC, GameStop, I mean, these names have had massive options volumes. Uh, AMC in particular is just obscene options volume. We did a quick study of two weeks ago. They had a day, uh, I believe it was a Thursday, they traded 2.8 million call options. If we look back at our data going back to 2005, and that was the 50th largest one-day volume for a stock ever going back to 2005. So that's, you know, that's a really big number. I'm not sure statistically what those odds are. If you, you know, obviously track 250 trading days per year over the last, uh, you know, 25 years, you know, that, that's a lot of volume that traded. So anytime you have a name like that where there is that big options volume and options trading, there should be big hedging flow tied to that. The other thing about this hedging flow is that the market makers have to hedge constantly. They can't just sort of, if you have a big fund, for example, that comes in, they need to buy 10 million shares of, uh, of uh, you know, BlackBerry. Their order comes in, they may trade it over the day or however they want to execute it, and then the order's done, right? They're gone. But a market maker needs to continuously hedge all day long. Stock goes up, they got to, you know, buy or sell. And if the stock comes down, they got to do the reverse, right? They're going to constantly adjust their book constantly trade those flows and the more options trade the bigger their hedging flows gets and they are obviously also required to make markets all day long at least most of them as primary market makers and so you know this hedging flow never goes away it's consistent all day long yes you know if a big pension fund comes in 
and decides to trade a name, it can override or, or, or push around those options flows, right? Or change the market around. But a lot of times this comes back in this mean reversion concept we'll talk about where the stock maybe will get pushed up or the ES will get pushed up into a big resistance zone um, for the S&P 500 and market makers will need to sort of adjust their hedges and bring the market back down into these big options levels. So the point is, is that um, the options market making flow is very large and it's very consistent. It's in there all day long, day in and day out. And the hero indicator is meant to sort of show us those flows that are taking place in real time and then that builds into our analysis that we provide every single morning before the market opens let's talk briefly about how delta hedging works so anytime that an options trade hits the tape someone buys a call or sells a put market makers may need to hedge that trade and that is called a delta hedge so if somebody buys a call bruce comes and buys a call on the market maker bruce buys a call I'm short the call as a market maker and I have risk if the stock goes up. As a market maker, I don't want directional risk. So what do I do? I go out and I buy shares of stock. Now the delta is the number of shares that I'm gonna to need to buy. So if the option is a 50 delta call, I'll buy 50 shares of stock if it's a one lot option. And if it's a you know larger order, I'll need to buy more shares. So that initial hedge that happens is the delta trade. And that is what the hero is measuring for us. And as you can see on this table, I won't go through all these, but when the trader initiates, that is what we're measuring, right? So the hero is literally showing you this dealer, sorry about that, this dealer component right here. So when at the start of the uh, presentation here, I said, look, if, if trader, if the cumulative indicator is showing a bullish flow, that means we got to buy stock. That's because the dealer hedge is to buy and vice versa. We showed that, that example where the hero dropped very sharply and there was a big stop run. It was, that's why I said it's likely somebody sold a call or bought a put because those are the two trades that generate a negative delta trade or a negative hero reading like we saw on the screen. A few things about hedging. There needs to be a certain amount of hedging pressure to trade. If retail traders are coming in and buying one lots, it's likely that those aren't necessarily being hedged. So you want to look for large trades, which we can talk about on the screen. Those trades need to get hedged immediately, right? Immediately, right? Because those are bringing on a lot of risk. Those big trades, and then the second component is this rebalance idea through the day. We know that when the market opens, there's a lot of hedging flow that comes in, right? Because overnight stocks move around, and, and uh, pre-market there's a lot of activity. So there's got to be a lot of hedging flow for market makers to start the day. And then the other period we think is extremely important is that into the close, in the last 20 or 30 minutes of the day. Uh, all traders, market makers, just like any traders, their risk needs to be squared up at 4 p.m. You know, they have risk managers that are going to tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, your exposure in you know, stock ABC is just way too big. They, they can't take that. They, can, they don't want that. So they make sure that into the close, they all, they all hedge. And then this ties back to the large trade idea that when a random big trade comes in, that trade needs to be addressed and hedged. So those two components are the hedging component. Uh, and that's the value of hero we think kind of intraday and then the third one which is really important is sentiment right if we know that people are buying puts all day long in gamestop stock's probably going to be under some pressure right no guarantees or any of this stuff but that's a major indicator to me when i look and say okay if i know people are putting on bearish trades you know that likely is saying that the stock is going to be under some pressure right so it can be a a, a divergent or uh, it can coincide with the way things are moving and, and however you want to play that signal can be up to you. Uh, but that sentiment indicator we think is really important. Let's talk briefly about Hero Works. Bookmap is a partner of ours and I want to make sure everyone you know, is, is aware of how this uh, flow comes in. But basically what we do is we're watching the US options stream in real time. It is the largest market data feed in the world as far as I know and is a tremendous amount of computing power and Bookmap obviously is uh, adept at handling high frequency trades uh, and market, excuse me, high frequency order flow uh, and, and quote feeds, I should say, not high frequency trades, but high frequency uh, quote flows. And they're able to parse this. So we have a black box that resides on the book map infrastructure and the order feed, uh, the quote data feed and trade feed comes into our black box and then it's displayed in the book map chart. So the hero indicator self stands for the hedging impact of real time options. As you can all probably figure out by now, we are monitoring and watching that real-time trade options feed. Um, as all the trades come in, we display on your chart in real-time 
the hedge impact of all those trades. We showed some examples at the top, so I'm just going to flip through these next few slides. But basically what you're going to see here is we have two sets of indicators. On screen, we have these little triangles, and the triangles are showing every single individual trade. And if it's green, that's a bullish trade took place. And if it's red, that's a bearish trade that took place. And then inside of the indicator itself is a number. And that number is showing you the actual hedge impact of each individual trade. So a big number, you know, 1K means this was a larger trade from a hedge impact perspective than a smaller number here, like 495. So a bigger number likely means a larger hedge, right? And that should have more impact to the market. The other thing to note is there's two types of trades that you often see here. One will be one very large trade, which is oftentimes comes through a bank desk. Someone might call, you know, JP Morgan and say, I want to buy 10,000 SPX calls at the money. What's well, likely that the market make or that the bank, excuse me, in that case, is going to put the hedge up first and then print the trade. So you may see in, in this case a big jump or drop in futures and then an options print. And then the second way is through a sweep mechanism where you put your order into an algo, right? And the algo in this case would show you 20 very small trades or smaller trades, meaning 20 small triangles, and then you would see the the hedge impact oftentimes come after that. So the indicator is displaying this data to you, right? It's 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 translating this raw data into what we believe are actionable metrics and uh, and showing you these uh, again these hedging flows. So in this case, those are the on-screen triangles, and then below we have this cumulative indicator. The cumulative indicator is the rolling sum of all of these triangles essentially. It's telling you how this flow is shaping up over the day, and it's also a convenient way to really see large trades that come in. If you don't, if you think that the on-screen indicators uh, can get a little bit much or a little overwhelming, you can watch this cumulative indicator and see here, for example, it's clear that a big bearish trade just came in. Again, that this syncs with the original example I showed in, in real time, um, and and the hedging flows will likely come in on top of that. Now, all of these indicators are fully customizable. The color, the size, we have some aggregation metrics or uh, aggregation features you can show. So as you get comfortable with it, and depending on how you like to view your charts as a trader, you know everybody likes to have a little bit of a different setting or flavor. So these triangles are completely customizable, but you you can't do anything to adjust this cumulative indicator. You can change the color, but we don't allow you to change the uh, aggregation method for the cumulative indicator because we don't want you to lose any little flow. Every trade from a one lot up to a you know 10,000 lot, whatever it is, gets tracked by that cumulative indicator, but you can change the size uh, and aggregation features of those on-screen indicators. Uh, we should note that there is a video on our YouTube channel that walks you through all those settings. This also works for single stock, as you can imagine, off of, again, the opening presentation. But here again, we were looking at GameStop. Uh, this was obviously charted a few weeks old because GameStop's now at 230. Uh, but you can see the stock here comes into highs. And then as it hits the highs, big bearish flow comes in. And with that, the stock will trade lower. So this is a big signal, obviously, that the stock was going to come under some pressure. And then when the HERO indicator flattens out, I mentioned this at the top, but when this flattens out, it's simply saying that the bearish flow has stopped, right? It's not bullish flow anymore. It's not bearish. It's just whether it's neutral, meaning you know buyers and sellers are coming in, or it's simply that volume has dried up. Either way, this, this is now a neutral reading. So again, bearish flow comes in, the hedge flow comes off, but the, the hedging flow comes in to short the stock or sell the stock off. But then you have this point where the options flow stalls, right? And when it stalls, that can be an interesting time to watch the market because that can tell you, okay, the options pressure is now off. And that can oftentimes show uh, points at which the, the market may mean revert or change. And we'll also see with our spot gamma levels that the options flow in the ES will build into our big options levels. And then you'll see the options flow change or flatten out around those big options levels. It's been quite interesting to see how the play out, how our levels play out, right? Our daily levels play out with these, um, with the real time flow that you see. You can also watch the VIX, which is quite interesting. We found that the thing that's most interesting about the VIX is that, again, it's a sentiment indicator. You want to know where the big bearish or bullish flow is coming into the VIX. It doesn't necessarily translate into the price of the VIX futures, but by bringing up the VIX futures, I can watch the real time flow in the VIX. It's particularly interesting when the market is really moving around quite a bit. You can also watch the VXX and UVXY options, which is quite interesting if you like to play those roles. Uh, I think there's actually 
some insight with the hero indicator with those roles. If any of those, if any of you guys like to play the decay of those um, of those uh, VXX and UVXY, those VIX products, it's, it's uh, quite interesting. So the ES and NASDAQ futures, you know, we showed some of these coincidental things. What I'd like to do is just sort of flip through the next two slides here and then show some on-screen uh, real live information, live flow, and then we can uh, very gladly answer any questions. Again, you know, obviously bullish indicator here, bullish flow comes in, all of these dips get bought and we sort of have this head pressure up into the end of the day. I mentioned before that at around four o'clock and is when we think one of the bigger hedging times is on the day and oftentimes if you see positive options trades positive delta trades then that can maybe give a clue that at the end of the day particularly when the market is very busy and very volatile that dealers have to do a lot of buying or selling to hedge themselves out so here you can see really big bullish options flow all day long and that lend that hey maybe dealers got to buy some futures into the close to hedge out their book and you can see in this case the market gets bid right to four o'clock and then right as the market closes, and we get this adjustment right so we get this real-time bid until the risk is sealed up or risk is covered and then and then it sort of mean reverse just a little bit uh, but you can kind of get a good feeling for which way some market makers may have to lean based on this cumulative indicator over the day this works the same way bearish obviously what was interesting about this chart is right at one of our major levels this was a fed uh statement came out and the initial reading was bearish and i sh i include this chart because the initial reading is bearish and what was interesting here is that we hit this other major level 4200 but the cumulative indicator kept selling off so in this case the mean reversion trade was it made me pause playing a mean reversion trade because this bearish flow in the market kept coming in in other words puts uh call sellers or put buyers one of the two kept coming into the market and that was the clue that hey we may not get the bounce that we're looking for here and obviously this sits on our major risk line of 4200 uh at the time you know so the fact that this bearish flow kept coming in meant that hey maybe i don't want to play this mean reversion right um, and obviously there's no guarantees in trading not giving trade advice here but this kind of idea that the bearish flow kept in kept coming in this is not only a sentiment indicator but the idea that market makers may have to keep selling especially as you get this gamma flip level uh, that that hedge pressure might may keep on the stock what's kind of funny about this chart is this is from may 10th and we're, and we're kind of basically right back to these levels here a full month later gamma flipping at the same point 4200 and major resistance at the same line as 4246 so a uh, month later here we really haven't gone anywhere in the market as a whole if you want to get the hero indicator you can head over to the bookmap marketplace it's on the front page they've uh, been very kind to put us up there i believe it's the top right and there's some bundles for spot gamma levels as well as the indicator um, itself so let's uh, close this presentation here and then i'm going to show some on-screen charts in amc and gamestop so Again, here is the real-time flow for the ES. You can see now we've really turned a little bit bullish here. So we were quite negative, and now this flow is starting to drift up. Our major resistance line, just to pull that on the screen here, these are our major levels for today. Uh, 42.73 is the major top of the range, but you can see in, inside of here, 42.50 has a pretty thick band of gamma. And well and then our support line our major support line for the day is 42.25 so those are the really the band is 42.25 up to 42.73 is our levels for the day and so when you take that in context with the fact that now the flow is still negative on the day at negative 15,000 but you can see it has come a little bit more bullish uh, and the selling has ceased so overall we still have to flip back positive so to speak on the hero indicator which is here uh, but there is a little bit more of a neutral stance to the market at the moment so, so again, Brent, a, a question yeah, on that. Yeah. Like, so um, I, I've seen you uh, cover this a few times. Um, the when you see the spikes in the uh, cumulative volume uh, delta in the in the sub chart there, uh, the way that you've been covering this is like, okay, now we know the positions of the of the hedgers in these areas, and when it starts to flatten out like this, uh, it means basically they're not hedging any longer. They they've made their hedge. Yeah, that, that's that's exactly right. And so if you think about this here, this this is 
you know, slightly bullish flow, right? It's not, but there's no, really not much movement when you compare it to what happened here or what happened in here, right? And I mentioned before that, you know, market makers aren't here to take directional risk. And so they need to hedge right away. And then once that hedge is done, yes, they have the gamma hedge, which is the adjustment to their hedge that takes place over the day, but really it's a delta hedge that comes in uh, and it's kind of immediate. And, and so what's interesting before, as I meant, sometimes uh, you'll see the big hedge first and then the option will print. So in this case, that's kind of what catches my eyes. You see, again, a big stop run and then here's the print itself. Because obviously, you know, with the big desks, someone may call up, again, JP Morgan, say, I need to buy 10,000 calls. And then the bank may take that order down themselves. I mean, they'll trade it themselves. They'll put the hedge up first. Or they may call around to other desks and say, hey, do you guys want a piece of this trade, right? And and so, you know, this rip here, you know, may well coincide with this fact that the flow bounced here. We get this stop run and then, boom, you see the big options print uh, go up which is sort of, you know, a little bit of the reverse of what you see here. But the fact that you have a big options trade and then a big stop run, to me, you know, that's very coincidental. Uh, that those two have to be linked because oftentimes you'll see like, here's a big stop run, right? But there's no real options trade in there. Uh, but that that is a very good point, Bruce, that, you know, really we see, and you know, just very neutral flow in here. Stop runs are very quiet. Not much is going on and the market is just kind of sideways uh, along with that. I mean, it's... it's, it's... <clears throat> You know, it's a it's a different read on the cumulative because um, it, typically, like a cumulative volume delta, like if you're looking at just volume, for example, uh, mm -hmm. in the study, um, you know, you're you're using different readings, not only spikes but also different readings and nuances in that in that uh, cumulative reading. Uh, but in options, it's a bit different. Uh, what you're saying here of the reading when the bigger hedges have been made and it's just like they're done at that point and like you know they have to wait until uh another time to hedge or they're slightly adding to it in this case bullish uh you know to the to the um yeah uh, and i and i think it's pressure too right i mean the the fact that the that this indicator here is so flat for the whole time says that there's nothing of any real size going here but at some point if this continues to just drift higher and higher and higher that's pressure that adds up that they'll need to hedge at some point you know right. if, if all retail comes in and everyone every retail trade in the world buys a one lot of, of AMC calls, you know, that first one lot doesn't need to get hedged, but does the 10th, 20th, 30th, you know, 1000 times that a retail trader buys a single call? Yeah, those got to get hedged at some point, right? So, you know, it's a pressure, um, there's a pressure component to the whole thing really as well. Right, right, understood. So looking at some individual stocks here as well, I don't know if we want to take some questions while we're talking about this, but you know, I like to show the real-time feed rather than just some static charts so that people can really get a feel intraday for how things are going. Um, look at GameStop here. GameStop 230 is our, excuse me, 250 is our major level going into the big expiration today. And in this case, it's slightly bullish options flow. Um, it's not overwhelmingly, this 500 number is not a very big number. So GameStop is, is actually pretty quiet. In this case, not much going on. Uh, Tesla, I think we have some on chart indicators for, or is it IWM I left the on charts in? Yeah, so this is really interesting here. I mean, IWM's getting beat up pretty good. And then this is just very big bearish flow. So this is super interesting here to, to look at. Um, and what you can do actually is you can, we can put the on charts on, but you can go to an options montage and look up the trades and see, okay, what actually took place here. But, you know, if you look at, I mean, look at the, the timing of this here, you know, and, and this selling is just so interesting to me, how big of a trade this is. And that pressure just stays on and the stock, you know, IWM just can't catch a bounce. So this is that pressure, right? It, it never comes off. The selling pressure never comes off on IWM. I had uh, uh, was Apple I left on charts on. So here's Apple, you know, totally different story. It's bullish flow coming in. You know, this kind of almost smells like some kind of rotation when you see such bearish flow in IWM and then, you know, these major tech names, Apple and Tesla both have very bullish flow uh, in, the, in the options name or in the option space. So here are the on chart indicators themselves. Again, you know, we can look at this and see big drop in the off the top you know this the the flow flattens out in the hero indicator and here start it starts selling off the the options flow is negative all of a sudden and with that we see big liquidity timed with these big sell-offs and so you say is this news you know i don't know maybe a headline hit i'm not sure but i know that regardless of whether or not there was a headline i know that trades 
options trades, big options trades hit the market. And I can play this drop now differently in my view. You know, this is a 80 cent to $1 drop, something like that in this stock. And so if I know that, okay, look, big volume spike, was there big news? I don't think so. I think it was just the fact that this big negative options flow came into the market. And what you can do is if I can scroll my mouse wheel, well, I am scrolling my mouse wheel, I can zoom in on this flow and I can really dial in and see this is one of the great parts of having this flow in book map is that I can drag the chart back and then I can just scroll my mouse wheel and really zoom in to see, okay, specifically what happened here. Okay, it looks like, again, big negative bearish flow coming in and then it looks like here's just a big stock print so were these sweeps that hit the market uh, and then it had to get hedged or was there you know one bank that pieced something out and the hedge went off you know either way that that tells me look bearish 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 flow pressure 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 big stock print you know big bear stock print and then we're done you know maybe this is the hedge said that okay we're done and we trade sideways and look at how this options flow flattens out here and the stock goes just perfectly flat as well. I mean, that's, you know, these these two are extremely correlated here. So. Um, yeah, and, and also, I mean, uh, I haven't studied it enough to take a look at it though, but the but the the direction is downward. The the um, uh, hero uh, cumulative uh, can be flatline, but the direction the trade, the directional trade is is uh, is bearish. Uh, so. Uh, and and they're they're all set for it. Yeah, and and the other thing too is you can see these numbers here: 528, 251, 455. These are all these are big trades here, right? Bigger trades, they need a larger hedge. And then out of it, these numbers are all really small: 612, 1820, etc. So these are calls or what you know, possibly long calls and and long puts here or something like that. But these this flow is just pairing off. They're small trades, you know. If a retail trader buys a five lot, you know, that, that shows up on the indicator or that's indicated just as is a, you know, big hedge fund trade. So, you know, this is flat. So this is very neutral flow. Nothing happens. And you can see the stock just does absolutely nothing after dropping, you know, basically a dollar with this bearish options flow. So it's a, uh, it presents some interesting ways to look at stocks and, and how to play them. Um, all right, I'll take some of these questions here if someone has any. Yeah, sure. Um, so, for, well, first off, a, a few people are, are commenting on the, it looks like the vol, the volume has rolled over on the ES uh, uh, contract. It's now the September contract. I don't know if uh, you roll over. Yeah, maybe I later. The, uh, that, that's right. I, I didn't want to, I set up all this stuff and I didn't want to change my indicator. I realized that right before the, before the end. So uh, for anyone who subscribes to the spot game of stuff, all that is synced to go out today to the September contract uh, with an 11 point spread instead of a four point spread that we're using now. Okay, excellent. Um, so there's your guys' answer on that one. Uh, <laughs> the um, uh, I'm just a little curious, um, Brent. Like um, uh, 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 you've you've mentioned several times in the past about the um, you know the institutions that they 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 get they get their um, uh, you know. Uh, order to uh yeah you've we you know we want to purchase all these options or the dealer does and 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 uh uh he, then he needs to hedge if does he need to uh legally i'm just wondering like does he need to first you know take the options trade or does he hedge uh and then hedge after uh because he's kind of front running it basically well i mean he, he, right so the 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 upstairs guy is has to fill his customer or his order before uh, before he can do the hedge. So you know, once I take my risk on, right? Once I say, okay, Bruce, you're filled. Then I'll then what happens generally is so you know what your price is, and then I can put my hedge up, and then you know, kind of right after the fact, I need to put my the options trade up, right? Because if you put right. the options trade up and you tell the market, you know, the market can move away. So I can only really hedge that once you're filled. If I was going to put my hedge on first and then tell you you're filled, that would be the part that would be, you know, somewhat, uh, I don't want to say illegal, but, um, you know, that that would be frowned upon by regulars. So some kind of yeah. massive trade just hit here. It's kind of interesting. And then with an option sweep, what's interesting about those is that the market doesn't know that those are coming, right? Because those are an electronic sweep function. So the market makers have to react to that because suddenly, you know, in their electronic systems, it's all, 
you know, just a big book they have, they're going to say, oh, shoot, you know, we just bought a 10,000 AMC at the money calls. Like we got to run out and hedge that thing. And that's why sometimes you can see the prints hit first and then you'll, and then you can notice that the, um, that the, that the stock will move accordingly. And so as again here, you know, big icebergs, big stop runs, and then, you know, this kind of bearish, uh, excuse me, bullish options flow. So it's, it's interesting in this case that the stock kind of comes down with the stop run and then we see this thing print. So uh, um, yeah, fast. yeah, interesting, <laughs> interesting uh, 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 confluence there. Like someone's um, about to buy some calls, sell them. Uh, <laughs> so the Hero 4 Mac OS is in testing, I believe. So I don't, I, I'm going to say July 1st uh, my, is my expectation of when that should be ready, if not earlier. Uh, but we will need to check with, I believe, uh, A. Allen on your side, right, Bruce? Yes. Alan, good question. Do we look at customer initial option purchase or the broker hedge to look for the market direction? So we're looking at the customer flow. And if customer buys a call, then we know that a market maker needs to buy stock to hedge. So we're looking at the customer side of the trade to determine the market direction hedge. John David asked about Tesla. Bring that up for sure. Oh, unfortunately, John left us, bailed on us here. But here's the flow for Tesla for today. Again, it started bullish and then, you know, switched a little bit bearish. It's really just kind of been neutral. And Lusaki is down a little bit, um, or, or excuse me, it's up on the day, but it's down a little bit off the highs. Um, you know, fairly neutral options flow really after call 945. Uh, I mean, definitely. like this 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 kind of chart right here with the, with the hero, um, it, to me, like I, I have not looked into it yet, um, but it just looks like such a great pullback strategy. Yeah, it's, I mean, in this case, you know, this look, you could have selling that's not related to the options market and, um, you know, True. particularly like GameStop on like Thursday, you know, it looked like some massive fund was in there just kind of selling the thing after earnings and and the options indicators actually were positive or shifted positive towards the end of the day. And that was kind of an interesting way to look at the stock. But in this case, you know, the stock's down 10 bucks uh, from its high. It's still up on the day. Yeah, but this is bullish flow coming in, right? Um, so the the options market is not really backing off of this thing this isn't like massively bullish order flow but it's bullish so that would you know that goes against or diverges from the fact that the stock is coming off i mean this is quite a rip to start the day so maybe it's just some consolidation but you know what i personally have a little bit more comfort in buying a dip if i wanted to um with bullish flow options flow you know absolutely i would you know personally um whereas if this was sharply negative you know i would probably hold off wanting to buy a dip in, in this case. John, the, the cloud notes are should already be reading the new contract. I think if there's the spread is wrong. Uh, I think the spread is, should be 11 and I think it's currently reading four that's, that's been flipped for, for the close. Alan asks again, if we're looking at customer orders, then when do we look for the hero to tell us? I get confused in that part. Yeah, so the hero is telling you in real time what needs to take place. And the other thing, Alan, is that I don't know if you follow our regular spot gamma work, but the biggest the biggest options flow in the S&P 500 is, I mean, look at this huge options bullish trade and this thing just rips off the bottom. So it's fascinating. We see stuff like this all the time. You know, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's just amazing <laughs> to me. Um, but Anyways, I digress. So what happens is in the S&P 500 and sort of the basis for all of our work is that when SPX index options trade, which is a massive options complex, you know, there's obviously trillions of dollars linked to the S&P 500, but when SPX options trade and to a certain extent as well, the, the SPY, the, the market makers have, uh, will often hedge with futures. And that is what the impact is. And that is why the ES really respects these levels, uh, the, the options market. Obviously, everything is linked to the S&P 500 index. So you have not only the spider uh, ETF, but you have just the components of the index itself, right? There's there's a there's a basic equation that goes into adding up or putting together, you know, the S&P 500. The, you know, it's a it's a market cap weighted index. So Apple and Amazon and those stock, the, the movement of all those stocks goes together. So there are players that are arbitraging all of these different parts together, right? The individual stock, the futures, as well as, you know, the options and the ETF. So that is why uh, the ES futures 
syncs with or moves with the SPX options. It's because the S&P 500 is all linked. If any one part of that component, say if spiders start really moving up, but futures don't, well, there's an arbitrage there, right? And someone's going to work to collapse that or trade that arbitrage and lock in that, you know, lock in that money or that difference. So that is why when you see a big print in the SPX options, that's why how it can get translated into the spiders or the SPX. And it's also why you have to watch the whole S&P 500 options complex. You can't just watch spiders and try to trade off of that. And you can't just watch the SPX and try to trade off of that. SPY and SPX are both equally large. They're about the same size right now. And so you have to watch this whole thing holistically, right? Meaning you have to take in all those different pieces together. Uh, how does different levels get reflected, e.g. AMC calls? So let's pop over to AMC quick, take a look at that. For Colin, so call options, how do different levels get reflected? AMC calls at 55 and 70 with different pressure guess at 100, right? So we are not looking at, uh, good question, Colin. We are not looking at the number of contracts that trade. We are looking at the hedging pressure for that trade. So you could have a one lot at the money SPX option that means the market maker needs to buy or sell $5 million of features. Conversely, you could have a December, you know, uh, or you could have next week's, you know, 5,000 strike call option. You could have 100 of those trade, and those are so far out of the money, they require no hedge. And our, in, in our indicator in real time is going to show the difference, right? Because the hedging pressure is what matters, not the number of contracts, but the hedge required to lock in the risk or, or deflect the risk of that trade. So I hope that makes sense, Colin. We don't care. Again, this has nothing to do with the number of contracts that traded strictly the um, strictly the hedge impact of that. And again, look at this. You can see this right here. This curls up and we have a big stock pop right here. I mean, it's not a huge stock move. It's it's a good, you know, 40, 50 cents. But you can see those volume. The volume is how linked they are, right? Again, stock drops, big options trade. Um, these two are often so in sync. And we see these big trades oftentimes to see one or, one or two times a day where it's just such a big trade comes in and the market moves so much and you know yeah, that wasn't news right everyone else just scramble around to figure out what just happened and you go look at this on my screen right now i know that was just a big options trade and i can play that differently than a p you know a headline hits which really may shift the stock over the long time if i know this is a big trade that hits you're oftentimes going to get mean reversion like we just saw take place right here Yeah, that's exactly right, Colin. The algo discounts the the uh, it discounts trades that are too far out of the money or too small. You don't have to worry about any of that. That's why we're showing you the hedge impact, not the actual options print. Because as a trader, look, you don't want to parse through this information. I mean, look at this. You can see this bullish flow hits up up goes the stock, right? I mean, it's uh th this happens all day long, every day. This is why you know I have complete confidence in showing this play out in real time because look. Um, let's watch the live feed because this happens all day long, every day. It's really fascinating to, to watch. And, you know, again, it's hedge impact, right? It's not number of contracts. There's a lot of vendors that just show on a, on a pretty bland table, you know, big trades that went off. And then you got to manually try to parse through yourself. What does that mean to me? What does that mean to me as a trader? What, what, what am I supposed to do with that information? Well, instead, you can see that play out real time on a chart. And as far as I know, I've looked around pretty good. There's nowhere else to see this stuff on a chart in real time. There's people that show you tables and give you some, again, fairly static data, but nowhere else, um, I think even to, you know, pretty big hedge funds. I mean, we've been talking to, to you know, Bloomberg and the like, and, and there's just nothing else out there like this. So uh, really this combination of what, you know, we have built here with Bookmap is, uh, I think, you know, it's really, really pretty special. And I'm not just saying that to uh, to blow smoke on everybody here. I think it's... Uh, I think it's legitimately pretty amazing to watch. So it looks like the questions have all been answered for now. If anybody has any questions, uh, I am available at SpotGamma on Twitter, as Bruce mentioned. You can also send an email to info at SpotGamma.com. Through the Bookmap Marketplace, you can sign up for the Hero Indicator, as well as a bundle, uh, which gives you access to our Spot Gamma levels. So a lot of you like to have those cloud notes set up in addition to the Hero Indicator, uh, there's some nice uh, packages that you can sign up for there on the Bookmap Marketplace. Uh, good, good question, Colin, as well. I'll just take this one last one before I sign off. We are currently working to track all of this data. 
So the goal here is to be able to tell you within the next few weeks, hey, when the hero indicator reads positive or negative, you know, X, that means typically that the stock goes up or down you know, in correlation to that. So we're gathering all this data, we're gathering all this information. We're going to be able to hopefully tell you again within a few weeks, statistically, this is what happens. Uh, when the hero indicator, again, is positive 10,000, stocks tend to go up or down or whatever it may be. Uh, we're gathering that information. We're gathering this backdated, uh, back-tested data, and we're going to make all that available at some point um, over time here. Alan, I don't at the moment offer private coaching. If you have any questions, shoot us an email. We'll see if we can help you out. Info at spotgamma.com. Uh, yes. Um, Thank you, Bruce. I'm sorry about that. I have a very strange last name that causes people to uh, to pause. Um, uh, not to say your name is strange. I apologize. That was a hard, hard time to pronounce that. So you are very correct there, sir. It is the deltas that we're looking at with heroes, not the gammas. Uh, spot game is sort of da data, really the, the everyday data we put out before the open. That is really based off of gamma because it's a uh, the idea is that with spot gamma, at the end of the day, we're getting trades that have already taken place. We're looking at open interest. We're trying to figure out where dealers need to re-hedge. With the hero indicator, it's showing the real-time hedge that has to happen, and that's off of trades. So those trades, again, get delta hedge right away. Uh, and that is why this is a delta indication, not a gamma indication. Very, very good question, and kudos to you for making that differentiation. Uh, and Alan, yes, you can, I believe, look at this for a gamma squeeze. So we have this product called the Equity Hub, uh, which shows you where the big pockets of gamma are and where hedging is likely to pick up. But, it, I mean, you can just look at this right now in AMC, and we all, you know, are, are looking for when the hedging flow changes in a name so you can see it's very neutral leaning bearish options flow into this flat area here and then this call buying lifts off and you can see the correlation between big pockets of call buying as well as the stock going up now if you use this in combination i can't get into this now but we have a whole bunch of youtube videos that show you the hero indicator along with our equity hub levels and you can see how those overlap and how you can start to identify gamma squeezes. But in this case, you know, what's so interesting to watch in this in this particular instance is I believe that this lift is a function of strong call buying, as you can see here. And so if this cumulative indicator backs off or or goes sideways, that can be the tip that, hey, now the squeeze might be over, you know, for a certain amount of time. Obviously, it's trading, you never know for sure. But if I was saying, hey, this rip is kind of crazy, I would look for it to trade into a level with big open interest. And then now you can see that the pressure here has shifted, right? And and the stock is starting to, to bleed off and come back down. I mean, this is a this is a pretty good move here, right? Dollar two dollar and fifty cent move. And now the options flow looks like it's starting to turn. So if you wanted to short the stock, this could be one of the things you look for is the 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 options flow to change pace, right? Now, if if the hero indicator kicks back off, maybe you want to back off of that short, you know, but use this in conjunction with some of your other levels. Uh, and things you're looking at uh, as a trader. So, yeah, I mean, Brent, this is uh, just to kind of um, comment on that, on the tail of that. Like, just reading the order flow within the the, the options indication here um, is is that's you're getting quite an edge uh, there uh, by by being able to understand where that liquidity is, and and see the buyers coming in charging up after that liquidity, after these um, this, these bullish uh, options um, uh, hedging positions here. Yeah, and and uh, it's it's a great it's a great point, Bruce. You know, so much of what you guys talk about is, you know, where's the liquidity and and the stock and or future will seek out where that liquidity is, right? And so, you know, you can you can use this as a way to sort of again overlay. Okay, I know I want to get long the stock. Where do I want to sell? As long as the bullish pressure is coming in, we'll look for these areas of big liquidity. Uh, but, you know, some of this, again, as, a, as traders, you know, you all have your different strategies and, and this hero indicator can really be a great overlay into that. Um, I think there can be some interesting trade opportunities unlocked that are specific to hero. But at the end of the day, we're, we're here to supplement what you as a trader know and understand and what your strategy is. And um, I think this is a really powerful tool to, to add in. And, and here you can see, look, this is starting to flatten out. Now, who's to say a big call buyer doesn't come in right now, right? And this whole thing jumps up again. But I know if the weight of this flow starts to shift and I was interested in shorting, maybe it would be an interesting place because this is telling me this pressure is starting to back off a little bit, you know. Uh, so 
is are the odds with me are the probabilities with me you know that's for you as a trader to figure out but here's just again a great way to to help make that decision right yeah yeah i mean it's interesting to kind of read here due to the what you were talking about um well several times about how it flattens out um, and maybe it goes even slightly down, but that doesn't mean anything. Like th th it's a different way of reading the cumulative. Um, yeah, the options exactly. hedging right. has taken place. Uh, so uh, you know, as, as long as more buyers come in, it's just going to go up. Um, yeah, and that, even that is a very important distinction. I mean, this is this is real time bullish flow coming in here, and and the stock you know trades higher. And then this this here is kind of not much. I mean, it's a little bit bearish, right? But it's flat, so there's not big orders coming in. So in a way you can say, you know, ignore the fact that this is bullish for the moment, right? Don't forget these readings here for a moment. You know, this is now flatlined, right? If you were on a heart monitor, you know, that would be <laughs> like bad for you and the stock does nothing. And now you can see, okay, look, big bullish trade just came in. So you want to read the context of the market overall, right? Uh, and that can that can tell you something is this majorly positive or majorly negative, but you're also right that you have to sort of make a mental adjustment along with the uh, the cumulative indicator to look at the, what's happening in real time, right? Because in, in real time right now, more bullish flow came in, stock pops. So you're exactly right. There, this is a little bit of a nuance on what I think people are typically used to reading in a cumulative indicator. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, people are drawing like their divert divergences, et cetera, on the, on their sub chart. And it's like, no, that's, you know, it's a little, little different. Um, yeah. Uh, way to way to look at it or understand the story behind it. it that's exactly right. It's kind of kind of the narrative of, of what's happening going on. So you know this is certainly from a sentiment perspective, you know, fact that this was bearish flow to start the day like this and then shifted positive. Well, that's a great sign for the stock, right? Uh, because okay, bullish bullish options trades are coming in. You know that that's regardless of whether you know whatever Greek you want to measure. Look, this is a, this is good for sentiment, right? Uh, bear, bullish options flow. And then inside of that, you know, how do I want to trade this thing? Am I looking to buy dips or, or sell the rips? And, and based on that, I don't necessarily care what's happened all day, you know, as much as, okay, look, bullish options flow. Now we're flattening out again and we flattened out now twice in the same price area. And so, you know, how do I want to play that um, you know, based off of sort of just this, you know, if I was looking at just this window here, you know, oops, I get better in my little pencil. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, no, it, it's interesting stuff. And, uh, uh, some, uh, you know, I'm, I'm becoming more familiar of like how to, how to, um, apply, uh, cool. sub chart and on chart, uh, uh, and start to understand, like you said, the, the narrative. Uh, yeah. It. And, and, and being, you know, fully open and transparent. I mean, uh, nobody's ever had a tool like this before to, to watch this in real time. And that, that goes for, for me as well. So I'm learning, you know, over the last two months we've had this, I've learned a lot. Uh, gained a lot of insight watching this play out in real time. Uh, so we're sort of learning together in some of these instances, right? Uh, but we've 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 grown enough to know that there's a huge link between the options market and the in the stock and futures market. And so you know this has really uncovered uh, or or shined some light on a on a big part of that intraday flow. Uh, so you know it's why it's something that I get so excited about and and uh, and, and hope everybody else does too. Yeah, um, I just um. Uh, before you go, Brent, um, can you show us the um, uh, page and maybe put the link into the chat uh, that you um, referred to for the uh, YouTube videos or you, the videos that you have on your site? Yeah, sure. So if you go to, uh, to um, I'll bring it up in this other window over here quick. So if you just go to youtube.com and then I'll post in the slash spot gamma um, window here, but here's our channel. I'll post that in, in the chat. Sorry about that. But you can see that uh, most of these videos in here, you know, show the hero indicator. So we're showing this in real time. We're showing this with the collaboration of our uh, Equity Hub product. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of videos just on Hero, and then really almost actually every day for the last uh, I think two weeks we put out videos using Hero Indicator and our Equity Hub in real time to show, you know, this is the flow we're reading, this is the flow we're watching, and you know we let it play out in real time and show everybody that. So uh, I'll put the, the link to that uh, in the chat. 
and then for everyone else, because uh, uh, Colin, you're asking about, uh, or this has been helpful and et cetera. Uh, so uh, you've got Brent's um, uh, content there. Uh, and then you can also go, uh, we've had, I don't know how many, four or five now with you, um, uh, you know, long, um, hour long webinars or so uh, on, our, on our YouTube channel at Bookmap. Uh, so if you want to go back and uh, he's done various presentations on it, uh, it's going very in depth before he even had Hero uh, on his levels, and then also on Hero as well. So I'll put that link into the chat here uh, for our Pro Trader webinars, uh, and th this one as well, well. It'll be in the same playlist. Okay, so uh, look for it uh, probably in um, well probably probably the, uh, early afternoon or mid afternoon. Uh, we'll have this uh, recorded and, and, and put on our, our YouTube channel. Uh, it will be in this playlist here. Hold on. Uh, it'll be under the Pro Trader webinar series playlist. And here is the link in the uh, chat. There you go. This thing go, huh? doesn't stop. Look at that. I mean, that's just a beautiful move. I mean, like it's very really intriguing uh, idea on these pullbacks. Um, they've made a big move on options and then uh, look for that kind of flattening and then or, you know, even maybe slightly down. Uh, but look at the order flow and then look for those pullbacks back up into I was looking for that 57 and then now it's already up to 58. My God. And looks yeah. like it wants to go to 59. No, no problem here. Yeah, If you look at the uh, the flow trading so far today, there are. 25,000 calls have traded already so far today at the 60 strike uh, for this upcoming expiration. So there's a lot of flow, options flow, just going right in at that 20, uh, at that 60 strike. Uh, so it's a lot of deltas being added there. It's a lot of gamma, right? Because as the stock goes higher, the dealer's got to buy more and more and more. And that peaks out at 60. So, um, so it's a lot of options. There's a lot of bullish options flow right now. Fascinating stuff. So anyway, I'll let everybody get back to it. Bruce, thank you very much for the opportunity to come and talk to everybody. I really appreciate it. And um Yeah, yeah. Just a couple more questions. I'm sorry. Oh, Brent. yeah, more um, questions. Sure. Great. Yeah. So John is asking, did, so he he heard right that this is not available yet for Mac OS? Correct. Correct. So we had special beta pricing that was available. Uh and that if you have a Mac, if you send an email to support at bookmap.com, they will give you a uh, a discount for the Mac, uh, basically the beta Mac version that's hopefully coming out in the next week or two. Okay. And then, uh, 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 Garrett, the YouTube links, well, I mean, uh, if, it, if it wasn't correct in there, uh, just do a, a search on YouTube for Spot Gamma. You, you'll get to it. Uh, I'll try this again here, Garrett, see if that works. Well, I pasted the link twice. That doesn't help. <laughs> All right, here we go. Try that out. Yeah, work work for me, uh, Garrett. All right, I just pasted it in there again, so we'll see what happens here. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Brent. Absolutely. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye bye.